Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 747. My name is Scott Boker, and I'm here to help you build a future-proof business and create your ultimate freedom. But it's up to you to take this information from this show and take action and become the amazing seller of your life. That's what we do here on the show. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Well, hey, in this episode, we're going to be talking with an Amazon sales optimization expert and how she has built her business, helping people grow their businesses with her services. And she's built an agency around this, but also how she is transitioning into being an online coach. I actually give her some advice towards the end of this episode, but we're going to really dive into what it looks like for someone right now starting out as someone selling on Amazon, what we can do to really drive those sales with what we currently have available. Now, she works with clients every single day, so I think it's important to listen to her because she's actually seeing what works, what doesn't work, and also seeing where it might be time to say, you know what, you might need to start building that brand brand that Scott's been talking about because this product is just like every other one out there. You got to start doing some other things. So we really dive into that. But the other part of this conversation that I want you to really pay attention to is that four years ago is when she got in this in this Amazon world, all right? And if you didn't listen to her uh, her other episode, I'm gonna link it up in the show notes. Her, her other episode was 453. And I definitely think you should listen to that because it kind of tells the entire story, but she's gonna give you a brief overview of what that looks like and how she got into the consulting side of things and where she's now running her own agency. But now she's in this, in this little bit of a transition, a, a pivot as we call it. And from there, she wants to be able to really help more people and leverage more of her time instead of reaching just one person, but reaching many. And I've had, you know, I've had some experience in this from the photography world into teaching about the photography side of things, the business side of things, and then starting an e-commerce business and then teaching about it. So I've been down this road. The cool thing is, is we kind of uncover inside of this, it was kind of like a coaching call at the end is where we really started to define who she should be targeting and who she should be helping with the assets that she currently already has. So this is kind of like a kind of like a, a two-way street here as far as us being able to go down one street as far as like, okay, help us optimize our listings, help us optimize what we currently have, talk about that and, and like share some of your insights. And then the other side of it is when you start to see a transition in your business or a pivot in your business, how do you know who you're supposed to be reaching? How do you know how to niche it down? And we really get into specifics there for that. So again, two different sides to this, but I think you're going to get a value out of all of it. So I definitely think you should listen to the entire thing. There's so many golden nuggets inside of here, and I never know where these are going to lead. So again, really excited to share this with you today with uh, Kathleen. Awesome, awesome uh, interview that I had with her. Now, before we do that, uh, Kathleen was also an attendee at Brand Accelerator Live, and you're going to hear her talk a little bit about that, but she was just blown away. And here's someone that does this for a living, right? Helps other people. And she came and she walked away with value, with more things that she wants to start to leverage and help people with building their brand on the agency side. So again, if you have not grabbed the recordings to Brand Accelerator Live, they're still available at the time of this recording. We are going to limit them up until probably around the six month mark until we start selling tickets for the uh, 2020 Brand Accelerator Live. So if you're listening to this before that and you wanted to really attend that live event, but in the comfort of your own home, you can head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash BAL 2019. Again, that's theamazingseller.com forward slash BAL 2019. And you can grab all the recordings there. It's the next best thing to being there live. There's nothing like being there live, which you're probably going to want to attend next year's, but it's the next best thing. So if you couldn't make it, well, here's your chance to sit in on Brand Accelerator Live 2019. All right. So with that all being said, I'm going to stop talking now because I want you to listen to this conversation and this coaching call, really, that uh, it turned into uh, with my good friend, Kathleen Coble. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Hey, Kathleen, welcome back to the show. How you doing? 
Oh, I'm doing so great, Scott. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's uh, not that long ago we were actually together in person once again at Brand Accelerator Live. That was pretty exciting, eh? Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Literally one of the best events I've ever been to. Really? Wow, that's that's pretty awesome. And you know, I just noticed we had some Canadians there. I just said A. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> the Canadians will love it that I said that I did that. So that's a shout out to all of uh, my Canadian friends. Uh, so yeah, I literally said that, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I wanted to get you back on the show. We had you, uh, we had you on the podcast at, uh, well, all the way back 453. And I actually met you in Texas when we had a little meetup and, uh, and then you had stopped by and then we had met there in person. I heard a little bit more about your story. I had you on and, uh, I just thought it was interesting on the model that you were, uh, that you were doing at the time and you're still doing it, but also things have changed a little bit. You're, you're kind of doing some other things. And, um, what I wanted to do is get you on the show. We could talk about that. And then I also wanted to give you the opportunity because we had talked about possibly doing some, we can call it a coaching call, strategy call, whatever, because you are in a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a transition, a pivot or whatever. And maybe I could give you a little bit of advice there. So is that about right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, it was so great to meet you again in Texas again, which was strange. We always get to meet in Texas, even though neither one of us live there. I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, But yeah, you know, when we had met, we had talked about how, you know, I was selling on Amazon, but I had really started you know, make, I, I built a business around consulting and around helping other people learn how to sell on Amazon. And so from the last time we talked, you know, primarily my business, um, and I still do consulting. I have an amazing team that supports me. Um, but as you know, you know, with, with children, especially when they're small, I have two little kids and another one on the way. So, you know, time is so important. So I've, mm. I've really, um, I've, I've lessened my client load. And what I'm really focusing on is teaching, is Mm -hmm. teaching other people, how can you take this skill of selling on Amazon and do freelance work, do consulting, um, teach yourself. And so that's really where I've uh, been been pivoting my business is not only to reach more people, um, but to also not necessarily be trading dollars for hours Mm -hmm. um, all the time. It's funny that you bring that up because you know, that's exactly kind of what my wife and I did in the photography business. Like we were doing client work, right? Like, so the lighting was best in the fall at around seven o'clock at night. Right. And so that means that we got to be out there. We had a, we had a giant field, by the way, too. We had like a two acre field with a pond. And so we used to do all of our photography sessions out there with the tall grass and, you know, the foliage and all of that stuff, but we had to hit the lighting just right. And so we were tied to that time with a client. And so then when my daughter, when we were pregnant for my daughter, who's now 11, that's what got us thinking, like, we got to figure out how we can leverage our time better. And this isn't going to work with, you know, our kids and where we want to go. So we kind of changed a little bit our direction and seen how could we take our knowledge that we've been doing for the past seven years to grow our business? How could we help others? And that's kind of where you're at. It's sounding like where you're like, you know, cause I, I get people to say, well, why, why do you teach it? Why don't you just, you know, why don't you just keep growing that? Like, why don't you just grow your agency? Why don't you, you know, Scott, why don't you just grow your photography business? Like, why do you, well, the thing is, is because I've learned stuff. You've learned stuff. Why shouldn't we go out there and teach it if we're good at it, right? Like if we're good at doing that and if we enjoy it, and if we genuinely want to help people, why shouldn't we do it? So um, I just wanted to throw that out there because people will say that, you know, and I think you're exactly in the same place that we were in the photography space where, you know, we wanted to leverage our time differently, but we also seen that we could help more people. Does that sound about right for you? Absolutely. I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly where I am. And it's so funny because I've had business coaches when I tell them, you know, I'm making this pivot. They're kind of like, well, why would you want to train your competition? Why Mm -hmm. would you want to teach people, you know, the the service that you're offering to other people? And, you know, like you said, it's it's really about serving more people. It's about helping more people. And quite honestly, I, I truly believe in collaboration over competition. I think if you have this competition mindset all of the time, Mm. you're not going to attract clients anyway. Um, and quite honestly, not every 
client that needs the services that I, my team and I provide is going to be the best fit for me. It could Mm. be a great fit for someone else. And so I really see, you know, because I've been doing this for like almost four years now, the Mm -hmm. consulting side of, of Amazon and and the skill of selling on Amazon, um, I've just seen a lot and I've had people approach me like, how can I get started with this? And I really do just feel like I have all this knowledge to be like, do this, this, and this. But mm-hmm. don't do this, this and this and mm-hmm. look out for this in clients and here's who you want to look for. And so I really do see that I can help a lot more people that way. It's just a matter of, you know, how do I how do I get the message out there mm-hmm. and how do I truly gain that no like and trust for people that want to learn as opposed to people who want to just hire me to do the service? Because that is two totally different demographics, too. Yeah, totally. Here's my response to that when someone says, well, you, you, you want to train your competition. Well, here's the deal. Like you're actually going to help more people with them growing their business so they can, again, have a service business, right? They're going to be, you're going to teach someone how to, how to create their own freelance or even an agency if they want to turn it into, like it can lead into that for that person. How many people are they going to employ or how many people are they going to help in their business that their business grows and then they help them, but then their business actually helps people solve a certain problem. So that's what, that's that ripple effect, right? That we talk about. And that's a lot what I talk about in my book, the take action effect is really creating that effect, creating that ripple effect by going out there and seeing how your path is led to where you are now. And you're exactly in that same timeline that I talk about. Like you started even the four years before that you actually got, if I remember correctly, you got introduced because one of, uh, I think it was your employer at the time or someone that you were working for, they needed to get their products launched and then you helped them launch them. And then you started to get good at it. And then you started to learn and then you're like, well, maybe I should help other people with their Amazon businesses to get their optimization down or to dial in their, you know, their images or like whatever, or just even the back end stuff, like any of that stuff. And then that led you to where you are now to where you're like, okay, it's time. I'm starting to feel that I should probably pivot because of this. My life is a little bit different. I've changed. I've evolved. I've learned. And that's kind of where I'm seeing it for you. Yep. Right. You're hundred percent right on. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like I've been there before, right? I've actually, yeah. <laughs> I've actually been in your shoes, right? And I'm kind of still in your shoes because I'm doing that right now. This podcast started as Amazon, right? Like how to launch your product on Amazon and what I was doing on Amazon. And now it's really pivoted for the past two years. Everyone I talk to now, they're like, Scott, I love it. How now that it's all about building a brand. So now the message has been out there. It's been over two years, but it's been a slow pivot. The book, part of the pivot. Right. And all of that stuff we have to do uh, in order to evolve. And and really, our life's change. You're going to change here. Even what you're doing right now, in four or five years, something else is going to be calling you or something is going to be like, you know, I need to make a change for whatever reason. Don't know yet. Have, you know, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, But anyway, so let's talk a little bit about, I want to talk about two things with you. First off, I want to talk a little bit about like how someone could be like listening right now and go, you know, I've tried a couple of products, I've just picked the wrong markets but I know how to launch on Amazon. I know how to do a, uh, an optimized listing. I know, um, how to get, you know, ungated or whatever. Like I know how to do these things, but someone else doesn't, and they would pay for that. How would someone take that expertise that they have, even though they don't have a giant successful business, doesn't mean they can't help someone with a business that could be potentially a giant successful business. How would someone go at that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's so many people, there's so many business owners that are looking for these skills that you and I and your listeners have, Mm. um, that it's just a matter of connecting. So what I did, the, my very first client came from Upwork dot com. So that's a freelancer site. Mm -hmm. So I really started just looking for freelance jobs online Mm -hmm. and, you know, anywhere, uh, freelancer.com, Upwork, things like that, going to local places. I even did look back on Craigslist, you know, back in the day, I think Mm -hmm. Craigslist still exists, but, um, but yeah. And then looking for, um, local businesses. I mean, I would have friends that came up to me that were like, Oh, you know, my uncle has this you know, retail business, just a small shop. And he's got this inventory he can't sell. Can you help him sell it online? So it's really, I would, I would talk about your skills. Um, you know, if you don't want to go as far as building out a whole website, which, you know, I now have, right. So I can 
direct people to my website and say, here are the services we offer. Mm -hmm. Um, here are the courses, trainings that we have, but really I would go to freelance sites. Upwork is a great one. There's always, I mean, I see all the time. There's all these different postings on people that need product listings done, that need ungating, that, you know, maybe their seller account got shut down and they need help with that. It's it's not the most sexy of tasks, right. but, you know, the more you do that for other people and the more clients you get, I mean, I've really built my entire agency is on referrals. Mm. I don't do paid ads um, or anything like that. It's all about referrals and the network that I've built over the last few years and people referring me. So I would look at those freelancer sites. I would go local, but I would also just start telling your networks, Hey, I have this skill. If you know anyone that's looking for help in listing on Amazon or with their Amazon business, or, you know, they have a business that isn't yet on Amazon, just start telling everyone, you know, and someone will come to you and say, Hey, I know someone that I can connect you with. Hmm. Let, let me ask you this, because there's a couple of different, I guess, angles that someone could take this and you kind of touched on it. So you have someone that is already selling and they're seeking out, like, how do I, how do I get my listing optimized? How do I get better conversions? Like, whatever, right? Like, how do I manage inventory? Like all of these tasks um, that you may or may not do, right? But there's some that you can do. And then there's the other side of it that someone is selling, whether it's brick and mortar, or maybe they're you know, their own e-commerce store now, and they aren't currently leveraging Amazon. Uh, what do you think, if you're just starting from scratch, is probably the one that you would say to focus on first? If there's one, I don't know. Yeah, I would say really the one to focus on first would probably, well, I would say probably two. And these are the two offers that I've had the most success with mm -hmm. are brand new store setups. So okay. you have an e-commerce brand or an offline brand who's just not on Amazon yet mm -hmm. because they're going to be a great client um, whether they need your help long term or not or whether you want to go into that. You know, we do do long term uh, maintenance um, mm -hmm. of the store and management, um, although we're trying to get away from that for more specific offerings and for the teaching. But that's a really great place to start because you're taking someone who's brand new, you're introducing them to Amazon, you're setting them up for success on Amazon, and then you can build that relationship even further and say, maybe they want your help with the long-term store management or with advertising or things like that. Mm. So getting them um, set up from scratch, I think is really a good place to focus. And then also the other one is people that are on Amazon that have done their own product listing, but don't necessarily understand the optimization of mm. Amazon. So they've, they've put up their listing, they've written a couple bullet points and have an image or two up there, but they're not making sales. And it's very frustrating for them because they know, you know, they love their product. They know the potential of their product, but they just don't understand the Amazon side of it. So that's the other one is people who are struggling to sell their products on Amazon now, the important thing is that you go look at their listing and make sure that you have things that you can do that can help them, right? If they've already uh, hired somebody to create an amazing product listing and they're still not selling, then they're probably going to need more help than just listing optimization. Mm. But that's a really good start because that gets clients in the door, but then also shows them really quickly that you know what you're doing and that you have the skills that will help them get more sales. And then you can kind of build your services, um, you know, after that. Uh, you bring up a good point there too. So like, uh, and I love that, that you're looking like, like, you're like, let me look and see what you have. And then I'll tell you if I think that we can help you with doing mm -hmm. what we normally do. Cause just to take someone's money and then have them mad at you because you're not able to, to deliver a result, you can't always guarantee it, but at least you'd have a better idea. You're like, you know what? Your images are really crappy. If we fix them, there's probably a good chance you're going to sell more. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have some obvious ones. So let's speak on that real quickly. Like what are some things that you think that you see that people that are listening right now, whether they're going to, you know, possibly go out there and help people, uh, you know, and become a freelancer or just for them to gain some knowledge. What are some things that you're seeing when someone brings their listing or their business to you? What's some things that you see as like low hanging fruit that they could probably fix or improve upon? 
Yeah, really the low hanging fruit are going to be those things that your Amazon customers are looking at and basing their decisions on whether to buy. So Scott, you already said images, right? We know images are critical now Mm -hmm. uh, in order for you to have a a properly optimized and converting Amazon listing. There's, Mm -hmm. you know, some you know, say, say you're buying a towel, right? How many different kinds of towels are there on Amazon, right? It's how do you figure out how to distinguish your listing from the competition, which is also something that I would recommend you do. Um, but it's, it's going to be your images. That's what people are looking at. Um, I always ask people if they have the registered trademark and Mm -hmm. if they can take advantage of brand registry, because that will help put them above their competition as well. Cause then they can use those images and, you know, down the line, they can use, um, sponsored brand advertising, things like that, all those nice perks with, with the brand registry, but really your images, your title, and making sure you have relevant keyword terms in your bullet points. Mm. And if I see, you know, just the above the fold part of the Amazon listing could use some help, then I know that I can help that person. Um, that's, that's really the main, you know, if you, if you're looking at a listing and it's got amazing images and a great title and keyword rich bullet points, and they're still not making sales. I mean, it, it could be something else, but you know, it's not just the low hanging fruit of Amazon. And then you have to decide, can I help this person? What would it take to help this person if I can? And is this something, you know, that I truly think I can help with. Cause you know, like you said, you don't want to just take someone's money because that's not how you build a true business. I mean, Mm. my business, like I said, is all based on referrals because we do a good job because we don't just take people's money and say, Oh, here we optimize your listing. See you later. Mm. Um, you really need to have good ethics and just really, you know, you, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're screwing someone over because they're just a small business owner like you are too. Mm. And, you know, you never want to just make a quick buck, but truly you want to help people. Mm. What, so what is it that you do mostly right now for people that they're seeing a result? Like what would be something that you're like, yeah, we do that more than anything. Is there something that stands out? The, the biggest project that we do is the store setups, but then after that, we also run advertising campaigns as oh, well. Okay. okay. So I, I like that combination because, um, like I said before, we do have quite a few stores that we manage long term. So that's like everything, right? We do their customer service. We help with inventory management, things like that. Um, it can get overwhelming depending uh, sometimes you don't know what you're getting into right. uh, when you, especially when you're first starting. But the thing I like about now we've really pivoted to offering if we'll, if we do a store setup, then, um, then we'll help them get their first reviews. And then after that, a lot of people then hire us to do their advertising because we know they have an amazing product listing because we set it up, mm. right? If people are just coming to you and saying, I need help advertising, you know, you can run ads, but I, I always tell them, like, I have to optimize your listing first if it's not already done, because that's how you're going to get the most bang for your buck from advertising dollars. And, you know, I don't want to advertise a listing that I know is not going to convert. Mm. And so that's really like a great progression of if you can help someone optimize their listings or get their store set up on Amazon and then help them with their advertising. Because a lot of times with the business owner, that's not really their zone of genius, right? They tend to be more creative and this isn't everyone, but just what I've seen is the business owner, they want to be creative. They want to be, um, you know, whether they're into the marketing or not, a lot of them don't have the analytical mind, um, or want or time. They don't want to do the advertising. And so that's, that becomes a no brainer. Yes. For them in order to truly make their product listing and their brand on Amazon successful is that you, I mean, you have to have advertising, especially when you're, when you're first getting started. And so we found that as a really great like next step. Um, and then that also gives us a lot of client success stories because that's a really great combination for success on Amazon. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it sounds like it sounds pretty simple, but yet there's a lot to that. But so what I'm gathering is, is you're like, okay, First, we look at make sure that everything is optimized with, you know, your listing, with your storefront, like all of that stuff. Now, once we have that up and running, that could probably just change your sales right there alone because you have a better, you know, higher converting, you know, optimized listing. But then 
the next thing that you need is traffic. And how do we get traffic? Well, you can pay for it through Amazon. So those, like you said, it's like a one-two punch. It's like you have those, but they have to be in that order because if not, you can drive traffic to a crappy listing. You're going to get crappy results, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's pretty much, to me, it's common sense, but some people think, well, I just, I have my listing. So now I should just get sales, you know? Um, right. <laughs> now, be, before we move on, so there's probably been times when you might look at a product or their listing or whatever. And you're just like, I think you just might be in a crowded market and I'm not sure you're going to be able to compete because yours looks like everyone else's. Does that ever happen? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's gotta be a tough call. Like deaf, I mean, a deaf conversation. It is. Um, it really is. And then that's when I, um, quite honestly, that's when I start referring them to you, Scott, and encourage them oh, to build you. a brand outside of Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, if, if their product looks like everyone else's mm-hmm. on Amazon, they have to take that next step. They have to be, they have to distinguish themselves from their competitors. And there's mm-hmm. only so much you can do on Amazon, True. which is why like I said, I refer them to your podcast and your books and say, you have to be building a brand outside of Amazon. And then your audience, you know, a portion of your audience will be those Amazon loyal people. Mm. Then they'll go find you on Amazon. And then, you know, then you can kind of then help, you know, your outside traffic increase your sales on Amazon. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not an easy conversation to have, but I do try to flip it to where it's encouraging and I show them resource, other resources that can help them. And, you know, they, they appreciate that because mm. I'm not going to pretend like I can help someone if I can't, cause I can't help everyone. And if I can go that one step further and give them resources and, you know, books and podcasts and videos to watch or referrals, um, you know, I'm also building a network of people that I can refer out to as well. Well, um, then, you know, then they're still a, you know, not a, not a customer, but they're still a happy person. They're still walking away and they're still going to refer people to me because they liked the way that I work, even though mm. we didn't have a chance to actually work together. No, that's it's, yeah, it's, it's totally the way that I've always done it. And I think that, you know, you can't go wrong, you know, <laughs> and you can sleep well at night. You know, I think that's the other thing, right? I think we have, uh, you know, good morals and we, we want to be able to sleep good at night. I mean, that's, that's key. Um, all right, let's, let's move into your recent pivot. And I know you had some questions and I said, you know what, let's just, let's, let's dig in. Let's, let's kind of talk about it. Like if you and I were just having that conversation privately. So what, I guess, like, where do you want to take this? Like what, what kind of questions do you have, um, to, to kind of go through this, this new pivot of yours? Yeah. So, you know, so really the, the people I've been helping are the brand owners, the business owners who just don't quite understand Amazon. Mm -hmm. And that became, you know, a very, I don't want to say easy sell, but it was just people knew they needed my help and we'd get on calls and they'd be like, yep, you know what you're doing. I'll hire you. Mm -hmm. And then we do a great job and get referrals and all that. So that was, um, that was an, I guess an easier business to grow than an information product. So Mm -hmm. I've really pivoted to teaching people how to do what I do, which is sell on Amazon, but then also sell your skills as a service so that Mm -hmm. you can help other business owners as well. Um, and what I've done is I have I have a couple courses. I have a membership site, and I've just recently launched a podcast. Um, I launched the podcast because you know blogging didn't really work for me, and every time I would go on someone else's podcast, I would get referrals. And mm-hmm. so, um, so that's why part of the reason why I started the podcast, but also then you know of course to reach more people. Um, and I think you know something I've been struggling with is that they're just completely two totally different markets mm-hmm. in that the people who are brand owners that are looking for my services are not the ones that want to actually learn the skill of selling on Amazon. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, I really, I've, I've pivoted more towards, uh, especially with the teaching and the courses is, um, is those service providers, you know, say a virtual assistant who wants to niche down and figure out a skill that they can really set themselves apart from, um, rather than being like a social media manager. Right. But Mm -hmm. I do see, you know, an Amazon store manager, Amazon consultant, I see the need for it. I see it growing. And I think for me, my struggle is that I need to figure out how to position it properly, but then also get in front of the right people who I can help to do that. Mm. And I tend to find people who say, 
you know, either I don't want to do this. I don't want to learn this. I just want you to do it for me. (laughs) Or, um, you know, I'm not sure if this is right for me or, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just not getting in front of the right people because my demographic, my, I have two totally different demographics, but I'd really like to pivot Mm -hmm. towards the people that want to learn how to sell on Amazon, whether it's for their own business or to be able to offer, offer services to other businesses. Yeah. I definitely see that there's a, there's a divide there in a sense, right? Like there's, there's like, uh, the one side of it would be like, Hey, let me show you how you can, you know, make an extra $3,000 per month by helping other business owners sell their products on Amazon. Like that's one that, that like, that's one audience, right? That's for someone still looking for what they might not even know a hundred percent, like all there is to know about Amazon, but then you would teach them. And through that teaching, you would also then teach them how to get clients. So that's a whole, that's a whole nother business model, if you will, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's a whole nother one, right? Now, the other thing you could do with that same, that same teaching in a sense is you could also tap into people that are frustrated that have given up on Amazon because it didn't work for them um, to their, to their fullest, you know, like success, right? Like they might've sold, but then competition came in. But if they had the right product or the right business and they could see the opportunity, they could really take their skills and and really, you know, pour gas on that fire. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's you could technically serve that person as well as the first person. So that's how I see that. The other side of it is like, hey, let me show you how to sell on Amazon and how to build, you know, a, a profitable business and brand. It's it's another thing completely. Right now, could you, you know, mix the two? You could, but then what happens is, is you start having, you start having different content for different, and then you're going to be burnt out. It's like, you need to figure out who you really want to serve and then more or less niche it down because that's what we're talking about here is we're niching it down into that one area. Now that doesn't mean that later you can't add one of these back in, but that's kind of what I've done, right? Like, I used to in in the old days when I was, you know, starting the podcast, it was like, let me show you how to pick a product, how to launch a product and, uh, you know, how to grow that to three to five products like that was that was it. And then I started to see what was happening. And then I'm like, I don't want to teach that anymore. Just that because it's not the only thing that's happening. So I need to pivot and I need to find the people that are somewhat agreeing with me, right? Like they're agreeing. They're like, yeah, I get it, Scott. You're right. I've seen this and we're seeing it every day. Like, so what I'm doing is I'm shining the light on, you know, the people that are emailing me or that are posting in groups. How do I liquidate my products? Because I picked a bad product. It's a dud. How do I, how do I liquid liquidate my product? Because, um, I just got, uh, you know, a notice from Amazon that they're uh, freezing my account. How do I get rid of like I'm seeing that. So what am I doing is I'm shining a light on that to let people know that this is real. This is happening. So what I would do is I wouldn't go down that road. I'd go down this road and you can add in Amazon, but it's not the only thing. So you see what I did there? I kind of repivoted as you know, as I evolved and as the market evolved. Um, so I think what you need to do is you need to figure out like what niche in this space do you want to serve and then from there, go all in on that. And all of your messaging, all of your content is going to be really be about shining the light on what they want and then what they need and then the, the road to get there. Does that make sense or is that more confusing? No, no, that that makes perfect sense. And I think you hit the nail on the head because I've... I think the reason I've been so resistant to it is because I've, I have these two different offerings, Mm -hmm. right? Like I don't want to give up the consulting. I still enjoy doing that. I just want to dial it down a bit in order to reach more people and teach, but it's two different audiences and the people that are hiring me for consulting are not the people that want to learn. And so, um, yeah. So then for me, it was like, well, who, who actually am I talking to Mm. for teaching? Who am I like, like you said, am I, am I looking for people that already know how to sell on Amazon that want to monetize their skill or maybe didn't have great luck with their products, but they understand it. Or am I looking at people who like your stay at home mom, who's like, how do I learn a skill that I can stay at home with? But you know, for me, I'm kind of like, you know, you need to go through a few steps. You don't just, you can't just pick it up in a day or two. Right. So, um, yeah, I think it's, 
who who is my target market? And like you said, go all in on that. And that's, that's scary, right? That's (laughs) scary to pick, to pick a niche and say, all right, I'm going all in. It's like, if you have your eggs in a couple different baskets, (laughs) it seems like it's easier, but it's not, you know, you're completely right. And that I just need to pick my target audience. Who am I talking to and, and go all in? And that's where my messaging needs to be a hundred percent. Yeah. I think there's like more that we're talking. Like I see like for you, like if I'm you and I'm, and I have your skill set and I have your, your story and I have your current, you know, clients that you're working with, like that is your social proof that you're the authority on listing optimization and advertising and getting more sales, right? Yours isn't necessarily how to start selling on Amazon to me. Yours Mm -hmm. is how do I take a frustrated seller and help them get more sales? Or how do I help them like really recognize what they need to do to make sure that their brand or even just the channel Amazon is functioning properly and they're optimizing it to the fullest. So what you could do then is you could be working with a client today and you could go through a little tweak that you did and then you've seen a result and then that's going to be an episode on your podcast or that's going to be a blog post or that's going to be a Facebook Live. Hey guys, you know, Kathleen here, I just got off the phone with a client, you know, we've been working with them for about three months and they they just had this thing happen and I wanted to share it with you because it's something you guys can tweak right now in your listings and you, it'll make a difference or at least it could make a difference. So here's what we did. And then you just tell what you did. Right. And so now what this does is people are going to reach out to you, go, Hey, can I hire you? And you're like, no, we're full. Right. But you're still going to have demand Mm -hmm. now because you're the authority saying we have people paying us to do this. Right. And I'm not taking any new clients right now, but while I'm not, here's how you do it. And Oh, if you want to take our home study course on how to fully optimize your business and get the most sales and get the most reviews without doing anything black hat, like doing all of these things, Now you're really reaching the person that's frustrated, that's already selling on Amazon, not starting to sell on Amazon. Mm, I see. I like that because it's, again, it's two totally different people, people that haven't started that are brand new and people that do understand. And I think, you know, I can speak to both, but I think you bring up a really great point in that I have that authority already. I already have the clients that I'm helping do it. So why not share that with everyone? Exactly. And it's like you have the content like built in because you're doing it. Like you can just pull from a case study or a story and you're not going to share the brand maybe, but you're going to share the story and what you did and how we tweaked this image and how we did this. And, you know, oh, we ran these ads and we were running them here. And then we did this and this changed, Um, you know, and then just giving updates on optimization. Amazon's giving us this new feature. This is how it works. Like you to do all of that, you're then sending out the signal. You're actually putting out the bait as we call it, right? The, the thing that's getting people's attention is, Hey, I'm selling on Amazon right now, but I need to get more sales or I'm selling on Amazon. I'm frustrated because I got a dud product or I need to liquidate this thing. Or do I need to liquidate this thing? So like your messaging would be like frustrated with your Amazon sales. Try these three things. Boom. There you go. Someone that listens or watches that or consumes that piece of content, they're already selling. It's not someone looking to sell right? Yeah. You got to narrow that down. And if you do, then all your messaging is, is about how to, you know, like you're the, you're the expert to really optimize and increase sales performance and, you know, like, you know, all of that stuff, like that's your thing. And then that's what you're going to be known for right now, right? You're the optimization queen, right? Like that's what you want. Like, so if you do that, That's all you're talking about all the time. And there's so many different angles you can go at it. There's so many people's, as you can use as case studies or examples. So it's endless on what you could do. You could even do something like this, which I've thought about doing, is uh, just take someone's Amazon listing that they haven't hired you or anything and talk about what's good about it or maybe what's bad about it. You kind of do an audit, you know, and just fire up your screen flow Start talking over it. Hey, hey guys, I want to jump in here real quick. I see this a lot. This is where I'm sure that these people, they haven't hired me, but I'm just doing this because I wanted to share with you. This is what they could do differently with just a few tweaks. And I I can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty sure this would make a huge difference because it's worked for a lot of our clients, right? So what did I do there? Gave them value, a real live example that they can see. And then I also sprinkled in there, I we do this for a lot of our clients. Instantly, yeah. authority, instantly, Can you help me? Well, we don't have any openings right now, but we do have a home study course here that will fully help you optimize and get better conversions. Here it is, right? Like, 
Yeah. It's a, it's a totally different like focus, right? Now, to 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 have someone say like, "Hey moms, are you busy? Do you want to learn how to make $3,000 a month, you know, by staying home?" Well, here's how you can do it. I've built an agency. And do you want to know how I did it? You can go ahead and do the same. Let me show you. First, I got to teach you how to sell on Amazon. Then I got to, you know, it's different if you're going after people that are already selling, but they've had, you know, not the best of luck with their product, but they could then help people with that. So I think it's more the other than teaching someone how to build an agency, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I I think you're right on. And it will also help them get results so much more quickly, which Mm. is really the goal, right? Right. How do I help more people more quickly? And if they already have the knowledge and the background and already understand Amazon, now it's I'm helping them get to the next step Mm -hmm. so that they can quickly see results. Yeah, exactly. And to me, like you have a lot quicker of, you know, of a of a timeline for someone to get a result. Right. For me, right, like right now, if someone starts something from scratch and they want to source a product and they want to, you know, get it landed and then get it listed, it's a three to a five month process before they can say, hey, Scott, I got results. Right. For you, it's like do this thing. Check back in a week. Let me know what you think. Let me know what happened. Oh my gosh, Kathleen, I tried that thing and my sales went from three a day to 10 a day just from that one tweak. And it's not a fluke. It's been happening now ever since. I haven't done anything else different, but just change that one thing. And you're like, cool. You mind if I share that? No, go ahead. And then you're like, Hey guys, Kathleen here. Just wanted to jump in real quick. I just had one of our listeners, you know, they, they messaged me from one of the tweaks that I shared last week. They got a, you know, they got a, a, from three sales to 10 sales growth. And this is all that they did. Boom, boom, boom. Right. If you want to watch that video again, go here. Like, see how it's all kind of baked in. Yep. So I love it. That's it. I'm excited. I'm really excited now. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, that that's obvious to me. Like, I think that's in your wheelhouse and you're doing it every day. So it's kind of like, you know, you don't have to think to yourself, like, I have to get someone started from scratch. Now, you could still have some of those free resources if you want to, because it always does get. But that's not really your ideal customer or your your you know, person that you're going to help because you want someone that you can help. That's already kind of got a listing live. Yeah. You know, and to me, that's, that's, you're just calling it out in the messaging and in the episode or the content that you're creating, you know, and it's, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to know how to get more sales? Like that's a lot of your messaging, right. Is going to be like how, how Janice got, you know, 10 extra sales per day by this one tweak that I shared with her. Who do, who's not going to pay attention to that? Right. So exactly. Yeah. So I, I I think that's the answer. I really, really do. Cool. That's wonderful. Thank you so any, much. Any other last uh, questions or anything that's uh, on your mind that we should uh, discuss or let anyone know while we're still here? No, I mean, no more questions. This is just really, really great information. Thank you so much, Scott, as always. You're just, you're so generous with your knowledge and, and with sharing and giving. Um, no, I mean, I would just say, I I was inspired to take action and start a podcast like you were. So I've started a podcast and uh, and have a website and all that good stuff. If people want to check that out, yeah, give them the info. It's, um, yeah, it's mastersofmarketplace.com. That's my website and also the podcast name. Just search for Masters of Marketplace. And uh, we just launched about two months ago. And so, um, so I'm loving, loving the podcast and, and Scott is going to be a, uh, a guest on my podcast yes, as well. So yes. yes. Um, so yeah, that's where everyone can find me and oh my gosh, Scott, thank you so much. This was just, this is really great and eye opening, and, uh, I'm really excited to start creating some new content around the new messaging. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And we'll definitely have to do a check-in with you and see how things are going. And yeah, and if anyone wants to know how to further optimize, you probably want to go ahead and and check out the podcast and check out the blog and all of that stuff. You see how that works, Kathleen? Just it's natural, right? Like we <laughs> yes. just we just got on here and shared some things that people can do right now. And they also got to listen to someone like yourself that's got a pretty successful business right now, has helped a lot of successful businesses, but now you're going through a little bit of a pivot. And that's normal. We talk about that in my book quite a, quite a bit. And and here we are. It's in it's in real time happening right now. So thank you so much, Kathleen, though, for coming on and sharing and being open 
reaction to all of this because I know it's not easy to come on here and, and kind of uh, you know go through the, the the little bit that we went in at the end there. But I think it's really valuable for people to listen, not just how I think, but how things kind of unfold as you start to unpack things. So um, thank you so much for doing that. And uh, I really, really, truly appreciate all that you've done and everything you do to the community or for the community and also for being an attendee at Brand Accelerator Live. That was awesome as well. So once again, thank you, Kathleen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Scott. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Another great conversation with a good friend of mine, Kathleen. And I just really love how she's evolved, how she has been doing this for four years now, and really how she even got into that. I talk a lot about this in my book, The Take Action Effect, and these moments that we do something and then we do it for a little while and then it kind of opens up a new door or it gives us maybe new perspective, or maybe it just gives us the information that we need to move to the next thing. And that's what's happening for her. And as you heard in the interview that I was doing with her in this call was how it started to unfold and how I really started to drill down into who is that target audience? Who is the person that you should be reaching out to or getting your message in front of? And this goes for a physical product brand or digital product brand. It doesn't matter. People are people and what you're helping them with in your business is really the solution that they might be searching for. And if you don't put out the right information that can attract those right people, well, it's great that you have all this traffic, but if they're not the right people, they're not the right people, right? And so we were really able to uncover that for her. And I'm really excited for her because I think what she has, and you heard me in this call with her, you heard that she has like all of the pieces to really make this work and to really help and serve more people, but also to grow her agency uh, because that's kind of already up and running and that can feed the information side of the business. So if you have a business right now that could lend itself to something else that you're doing without it actually taking away from the business, then why not, right? Why not explore that opportunity, all right? So again, uh, just wanted to give her a shout out. Kathleen is awesome, and I met her back in Texas, gosh, a few years back now, and again, it's one of those things. She showed up at one of the meetups. I met her in person. We were able to shake hands, and that just started the relationship, kind of like Kevin Sanderson, who now runs Brand Accelerator Live. So it's just kind of crazy how things happen. And again, I talked all about this in the book and really outline everything for you. So if you haven't grabbed your copy yet, here's your little nudge to go over there and do that. And you can find that over at takeactioneffect.com, takeactioneffect.com. And you can pick up the Kindle or the paperback or the hardcover or one of each if you want. And the audio book will be coming out shortly. I plan on recording that in early November and hopefully it will be ready for the holidays. So that's what I'm shooting for. So anyway, Take Action Effect dot com is where you can grab that. And then also the show notes of this episode can be found at the amazing seller.com forward slash seven forty seven. And you can grab all the goodies over there. All right, guys. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you, but you have to, you have to come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud, take action, have an awesome, amazing day. And I'll see you right back here on the next episode.